You're watching the Comcast Network. CN100, Chicago. On Tuesday night, the Evanston Wildcats jumped ahead of Loyola early and then survived a late Rambler rally to advance to the sectional championship. On Wednesday, New Trier stormed back from a 22-point deficit to beat Niles North in double overtime. Tonight, in the main East sectional final, it's Evanston versus New Trier on the CN100 Game of the Week. Both teams playing some quality basketball right now. Three-pointer on the way. That's good. Sweet jumper for two. Bounce pass up the floor on the money. That was beautiful. Every guy on the floor has brought his eight game tonight. Elio. Welcome to Park Ridge, everybody. One of the most beautiful high school campuses anywhere and one of the most electric atmospheres tonight. Here as we get ready for this 4A section championship game, it's number two seed New Trier against number one Evanston. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jim Blaney along with my Hall of Fame partner, Kenny McReynolds. The story in this section so far has been that no lead is safe. Evanston, Kenny, Mm -hmm. They blew a 20-point lead before beating Loyola by 10 the other night, but Nutrier is coming into this game having had to go to double overtime to beat Niles North on Wednesday night. Yeah, and that's going to be a big question about Nutrier. Are they tired? Do they have anything left? A double overtime game, Jim, this place is a sellout. It's extremely warm in here. Will Nutrier have enough left? Meanwhile, for Evanston, they are trying to earn their way to the Super Sectionals. For the second year in a row, they certainly have bigger plans than just getting past this game, Kenny, but they have to make sure they take care of business. They lost to the Trevians the last time these two teams played. Right, they lost the last time these two teams played, Jim, but remember, they also beat Nutrier the first time these two teams played, so it's the rubber match. I think Evanston will have the advantage with the guard play because they want to get up and down the floor. They want to make it the up-tempo game, but he's going to be a big factor. It's so hot in here that the concession stand, they gave us freeze pops to keep us cool. Let's talk about Nutrier because the thing they have going for them that Evanston really has a hard time defending is their twin towers inside, Spencer Bame and Kieran Brayboy. Brayboy is a little nicked up coming into this game, but he's going to play tonight. Well, he had 19 points in the last game, Jim, but remember, he walked out of here with ice on his ankle. He has a brace on his ankle right now, 19.6 rebounds. He's averaging 10 points a ball game. Boy, but he's something special. Meanwhile, for Evanston, you never know from game to game which one of their players is going to be the leading scorer. On Tuesday night against Loyola, it was Lance Jones. He scored the first 13 points of the game for the Wildcats. Yeah, he didn't miss a shot. He was his first five for five. Jim, when he's on, he's unstoppable. And he's going to be the key, I think, because transition baskets. He loves to get up and down the court, and that's what the Wildcats want to do tonight. Kenny is only one of two Hall of Famers that I brought with me for help tonight. Let's go to our good friend, Mark Kruger. Mark? All right, Jim, thank you very much. Well, if there's one thing we learned all week here at Maine East is that no lead is safe. You guys touched on it. Tuesday night, Loyola trailed by 20. Tied up Evanston before the Wildcats went on and win. On Wednesday night, New Trier down 22 late in the third quarter before they came back and ultimately beat Niles North in double overtime. So how will tonight's finals unfold here tonight? We'll have to wait and see. Now, New Trier, first sectional finals appearance since 2013. Meanwhile, the Evanston Wildcats trying to repeat as sectional champions. They beat Waukegan last year in the finals. Lost to Slaughter's Whitney Young Dolphins in the Super Sectionals. That was last year, and we'll see what happens again this year. Now, Evanston, they've won 10 of their last 11 ball games. The one game they lost at home in Beardsley's gym, they lost by 16 to these new Trier Trevians. They shot five of 30 from behind the arc in that game, so they are going to have to improve in that category here tonight. All right, time now to take a look at my keys to the game. First, for the number two seeded new Trier Trevians, better start. New Trier scored just two field goals in the first quarter on Wednesday night. Going to need a better start tonight. Fame's game with the uncertainty of Curon Brayboy's ankle. 
Spencer Bame is going to have to get touches early and often. And then take care of the ball. Turnover is going to be something to watch. In the fourth quarter and the two overtime periods combined on Wednesday night, New Trier committed just two turnovers. They did a great job of taking care of the basketball in those final three quarters. For Evanston, last loss. It was at Beersley Gym I mentioned a moment ago. Evanston going to have to try for some payback here tonight. Keep the intensity. Evanston let a 20-point lead slip away against Loyola Tuesday night. Don't get rattled when New Trier makes a run or two tonight. And then poised freshman, Lance Jones is going to have to get some help from a couple of freshmen, Blake Peters and Elijah Bull, neither of whom are afraid to step up and make plays. Those are my keys to the game. Now let's send it back to another Hall of Famer. Here is Jim Blaney. Mark, thank you very much. When Kenny and I come back, we'll get this thing started. They've just announced that this is a sellout. It is going to be jam-packed. It is going to be electric. Two arch rivals playing for the right to go to the Super Sectionals where the winner of this game will face either Lake Zurich or Barrington. We'll get it going next right here on the CN100 Game of the Week. You're watching the Comcast Network. CN100, Chicago. Join Backstage Chicago in celebrating Blue Man Group's 20th anniversary in the Windy City with Backstage Blue Man Group. Host Paul Lisnick goes in-depth with the show's stars. We not only unmask the Blue Man Group, but reveal exclusive behind-the-scenes footage to some of the Blue Man secrets. Go to CN100.TV for a list of airtimes or view this program anytime with Xfinity On Demand by selecting Get Local and choosing CN100. X1 users, scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. Join CN100 Sports for an inside look at the 2017 Mr. Basketball of Illinois, Mark Smith. Follow his improbable journey at Edwardsville High School from the baseball diamond to earning the greatest individual basketball award in the state. Get to know the Fighting Illini's freshman guard in this Sports Weekly Special. Go to CN100.TV for a list of airtimes or view this program anytime with Xfinity On Demand. X1 users, scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. And we welcome you back to Main East High School, Park Ridge, for tonight's 4A section championship, Nutrier against Evanston. The CN100 Game of the Week is brought to you by Xfinity. Get the internet speed and TV channels you want at a price you'll love. And find out how to get up to five lines of unlimited nationwide talk and text at no extra cost with Xfinity Mobile. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Villanova's Jalen Brunson is one of the country's top collegiate basketball players. In fact, he was just named Big East Player of the Year. He's in the running for the College Player of the Year nationally. In 2015, CN100 sat down with the newly crowned Illinois Mr. Basketball and discovered the work ethic and drive that makes him one of the best players in the country. You can view this program on CN100 or check it out on demand under Get Local. CN100, sports features, X1 users, Look for Get Local under the Xfinity Services tab. Okay, how did we get to this point? Evanston, the number one seed in the section, took out the Titans of Glenbrook South in the opening round, beat Notre Dame to win a regional championship, blew a 20-point lead against Loyola, but never trailed, and then won by 10 here on Tuesday night. That's how they got here. Meanwhile, for Nutrier, the number two seed in the section, beat Wheeling and Prospect to win their regional, and then came from 22 down to beat Niles North in double overtime. So here we are, the number one seed, the number two seed. They're going to go at it again. These two teams have already met twice this year. Evanston beat Nutrier by a point in overtime in January, and then three weeks ago, Nutrier was a winner at Evanston by 16. Starting lineups, the familiar faces, if you've been following these two teams all year, these have been the starters almost every night this season for these two clubs. Inside, I think, is the key to the game. Yes. Because Bame and Brayboy, the only one that has size to defend either one of them is Hall. And so Evanston can counteract that by making Nutrier run up and down the floor. Yes. 
same crew that we had on Tuesday night for the Loyola Evanston game. They'll get another crack at it. Kenny, might as well say it now. It is hot in here. <laughs> wow, look at all the people standing behind us. Folks, this is crazy. This is the place to be, let me tell you. It, it, it's an old township high school field house. It is jam packed. All uh, the students in the building on their feet. Yeah, th this is special, Jim. This is really special. And we are underway with a trip to the super sectionals on the line. Nutrier will get the basketball first. Evanston got out to a big lead right off the hop against Loyola on Tuesday night. Nutrier fell behind right away, and there's going to be a foul. That's going to be, oh, it is going to be on Lance Jones. Looked like he might have gotten the worst of it, but that is not the call. Yeah, well, you cannot afford to lose Lance Jones. Talking to the Evanston coaches this afternoon, they say the guard play they think is going to be very crucial because they want to make this an up-tempo game. That fatigue has to play a factor with Nutrier playing a double overtime game, plus the heat in this gym. Jones had 19 in that game against Loyola. Down low, Bray Boy gets his first touch of the night, got double team, passed off, and Bain can hit. Tipped up and in by Bray Boy, got inside position and put it on. Boy, what a great tip by Bray Boy, Jim. It looks like that ankle is okay. You better box him out. Lance Jones, he'll pass it off. Oh, you cannot leave. Blake Peters wide open from the top of the key. They did. They got away with it. Griffin Ryan, he'll lay it in. Boy, it looks like Nutrier wants to come out and run. But that is not their basketball game. But they'll take the advantage. When they can get it, they will run. Holden kicks it out. Lance Jones for a three, drained it. Boy, what a great ball movement, huh? Beautiful ball movement. Nutrier leads by a point. The Evanston student section is on the, on the floor on the end where Nutrier is shooting. Held ball, Evanston basketball. Meanwhile, the Nutrier students, they are in the end of the floor that Evanston is attacking, but they are up in the stands, and you see it, it is just absolutely packed here tonight. Well, Jim, watch the great ball move. You just swing it, Peters out to Lance Jones, well behind the three-point strike, for the three-pointer. Jones hit his first five shots on Tuesday night against Loyola. Blake Peters drives, got rid of it. Ryan Bost for a three, that's good. Well, the Wild Kids are not bashful about putting up the threes. And as was the case on Tuesday night against Loyola, Peters wasn't getting in on the act, and he's their top three-point shooter, 68 made so far this year. Bame gets his first real touch of the night. Wanted to go baseline, nice D by Jones. In the corner, Brian Conahan hit the back of the iron, and that was tipped out by Bame, and it will be Evanston basketball. Yeah, Bame just couldn't corral it. Jim goes off his fingertips. I love the way he asked the referees. Hey, didn't, I, didn't he tip that, Evanston? Wow, we look behind us. This, this is, this is the biggest deep. audience we've had all year long. Yeah, we're like four rows of people behind us. Hold him. Blake Peters for three and got it. Well, if you leave Blake Peters that wide open, you know he's going to shoot it. All nine Evanston points have come off three-pointers. And in the last game between these two teams, I swear, Kenny, I don't think Peters was feeling very well because he was in and out of the game all night long and had a difficult night shooting the basketball. But if there's one thing that can make a big difference between the last time these two teams met and tonight, it's if Blake Peters is hitting his shot. Right, and you see he had that really quick release, Jim. As soon as he gets the basketball in his hands, the ball is headed towards the basket. Peters a freshman, and he, of course, was the hero of the Maine South game in January. Hit the nation, nationally known 80-footer at the buzzer. Worldwide. <laughs> Good point. Bray Boy down low. Had it blocked by Hall. Nice. Hall got him a second time. Time to run. Jaheim Holden on Griffin Ryan. Didn't get the bucket, but did get fouled. Well, we talked about the only guy that could really guard the big guys from Nutria would be Matt Hall. He does a great job of blocking the shots. He blocks two shots, then Holden takes off and goes to the races, goes from coast to coast, and he's fouled. But what a great job 
by Matt Hall blocking the two shots. Holden, the leading free throw shooter that Evanston has, he's at 80%. Little extra body English on that one, but it went in. Should also point out that Holden and Blake Peters are both freshmen. Let me correct that. Isaiah Holden, his younger brother, is a freshman. Jaheim is a junior. Everston putting pressure on the ball. See, they want to make Nutria work. They want to tire Nutria out, thinking that they would get tired from that double overtime game as you're going to have a bump by Hall. That will be on Matt Hall, his first. Now, Evanston jumped out to a 13-3 lead on Loyola the other night. Meanwhile, Nutrier was down 16-6 at the end of the first quarter against Niles North. So, so far, this game is playing out the exact same way that the section semifinals did for both of these teams. Out of another, bounds. Another turnover by the Trevians. They had six in the first quarter alone against Niles North. Well, you know, that ball hit Coach Ellis, and he's out of bounds, and it took their officials a long time to blow the whistle. Evanston trying to take a double-digit lead if they can hit a three here. And Nutria going to go this 1-3-1 uh, zone. That one a little long. Matt Hall had his shot blocked by Griffin Ryan. Nearly turned over, yes it was. And Holden wasn't ready for the pass. Yeah, Holden was looking at the basket for the offensive rebound. Underneath, easy one for Spencer Bain. Boy, but Bray Boy with a nice one-handed pass. A nice left-handed bounce pass by Bray Boy. How about this, Kenny? No one in this game for either team has more than one basket. Really, and that's a nice pass, you see? Moving the basketball, just a wonderful left-handed pass. Slow bounce pass on the baseline for the two points. Nutrier has scored three two-pointers. And on the other end of the floor, Evanston has scored three three-pointers. They have a couple of free throws. And you see that. The, and you see, Jim, the length of Nutrier in this 1-3-1 one, one zone. That's what Evanston was worried about, the length. Because do you get many passing lanes to see that length? You know, those guys have big 6'8", six, 6'7", six, 6'5", six, long arms. So it's very hard to see and hard to pass. And I was talking to the Evanston coaches today about that 1-3-1 one, one zone. So far, the game is playing to both teams' strengths. All of Nutrier's points have come from in the paint. Blake Peters, two in a row. Well, he's feeling well tonight. Three weeks ago, he didn't look like he was feeling well. He's okay tonight. All the Evanston points on field goals have come from three-pointers. Brayboy down low, used the rim to protect the ball, didn't get it, but Bame is there to clean it up for him. Boy, what a great basketball play by Bame to follow the shot. You don't assume the ball's going in. He followed the shot. Nutrier is doing a lot of damage in the paint, but they're trying to trade twos and threes, and that's not going to work. Three-pointer, Ryan Bost misses. Rebound by Bame, and he was able to rip it away from Blake Peters, who had to adjust the goggles after yeah, that. that. That was a big-time rebound. Inside of three minutes to go in the first quarter. Bame, he can shoot threes. He hit the front of the iron on that one. Bost got position and got the rebound. Up the floor. Jaheim Holden into the lane and held ball. He was tied up by Sam Silverstein, Nutrier basketball. Well, what a great play by Silverstein, Jim, just to reach in and get a jump ball. That is a really, really big time play. See, Holden has nowhere to go. He has absolutely nowhere to go. Silverstein comes in with the left arm and ties him up. A great defensive play. Evanston showing a little bit of press by guarding the ball inbounds. Kirkpatrick picked up in midcourt by Matt Hall. And he is able to Lost dribble it, it into the front court. Well, I thought that got knocked out of his hand, but it's a turnover, third turnover for Nutrier. Yeah, the officials say he just dribbled it out of bounds. You know who used to do that a lot with Ben Gort? He played with the Bulls. I never saw a pro dribble the ball out of bounds, but nobody touched it. It's a good thing he could shoot. He certainly couldn't dribble. Good old number seven. For a pro. Evanston leading by six. You see that length again at 1-3-1 zone? But if you move the ball quickly, the baseline will be open. They moved it quickly, but they turned it over, and then it was knocked away. Kirkpatrick comes up with it. Got off his feet, but found Bain. Wide open. 
And Brayboy tried to shoot it and catch it in the same motion. He was fouled by Blake Peters. Yeah, Blake Peters was not going to give up the easy layup as he grabs Brayboy by the arm. But again, you talk about good ball movement. Nutria does it as well as anyone we've seen all year. They do a tremendous job moving the basketball. First free throw for the Trevians. Well, that was all upper body. No legs in that one. So Matt Hall is going to come out, and he will be replaced in the lineup by Jalen Gibson. Now, what this does for Evanston is this basically puts a track team on the floor. Right. Smaller lineup with guys that can all fly. So it's a little bit of a matchup problem for Nutrier as Brayboy hits the second free throw. So you have Brayboy and Bain, the two twin towers out there, and they really don't match up with anybody. Well, that's why they run back into that zone. Lance Jones tried the back cut. Boss made a nice catch. Peters hits his third three-pointer of the night. Uh, he's filling it tonight. Boy, but what a great pass back to Peters. Peters has nine. Nutrier has nine. Stolen away, Jalen Gibson. Up the floor, sees two blue shirts. Dropped it back. Jaheim Holden, tough pass to the baseline. From the corner, that one won't go. And the rebound by Brayboy. He wants to run it up the floor. And playing safety was Lance Jones. Steps back, knocks it down. Oh, my. Luturin needs a timeout. Six three-pointers in a little more than six minutes for the Evanston Wildcats when they lead by 11. What a step back. You see now, we get a bad pass. He gets jumped right into the passing lane. Lance Jones, you get the step back from the corner. Nothing but net. Here it is again. Really bad pass, Jim. You can't just lob it like that. Jones, watch the step back. The crossover. The step back. And the trade. Every single field goal for the Evanston Wildcats beyond the arc. And Jim, I'm happy to announce, we said there were four rows deep behind us. Now I think we're five rows deep of people standing behind us. Well, they're not here because they like us. They're here because they, <laughs> they can see this and see the replays. That's why they're hanging around. What a crowd, what atmosphere, what a start for the Wildcats. And before we go any further along here, our congratulations and thanks to the athletic department staff and the administration and the students here at Maine East. They have put on a wonderful show over three games that have been jam-packed each of the three nights. But this will be the biggest crowd tonight. Yes. And the capacity is 2,800, I think 2,865. Well, if you're thinking of, well, I'm gonna go check out what something else is doing right now, don't, because in both of the games in this section, Double-digit leads have not stood up. Right. You see, Evanston now, they're going to put full court press on the basketball. They really want to try to tire Nutrier out, thinking from that double overtime they would have to be tired. Nearly turned over. Deep down the floor, Kirkpatrick. He was double-teamed, and he used his elbow to get free, and Kirkpatrick gets pinned with a foul. Boy, it wasn't much, Jim, but he used that left arm right in front of the official. Good look at Scott Fricky. He is trying to get this group of seniors back downstate. They were freshmen, the last Nutrier team went downstate, lost to Fremd in the semis that year. Beyond the arc, can they do it again? No, missed that one. Bame with the rebound, but they are six out of 10, even after that miss shooting threes, you'll take that all night long. Little lob, nice pass inside. Brayboy couldn't hit. Goes back up strong and jams it home. Boy, he followed that shot, Jim. He was underneath the basket too far. Follows his shot. What a ball player. All the points for Nutrier have come in the paint. Well, we thought they would because of that size advantage. That's going to be a foul on Brayboy, his first. Oh, he caught a Euro step travel. Wow. I looked, I looked oh. down and made the call. Thanks for bailing me out. Here it is again. You see Brayboy was underneath the basket too far, but goes right after the basketball comes up with the slam dunk, good follow. So these two teams are staying with their script. Bombs away for Evanston, pounded inside for Nutrier. Kirkpatrick, little runner, that's short, rebound by Jalen Gibson, chance to run. 
Oh, they fill the lanes beautifully. It was like the Showtime Lakers there. And Peters makes a dangerous pass. He'll get it back. Did we get it? It is a held ball, not a timeout. It will stay with the Trevian. Yeah, or excuse me, with Bench was calling timeout, but the officials didn't give it. They didn't need it because they had the arrow. Right, they get the ball anyway. Matt Samuelson comes into the game for New Trier. Matt Mosher in as well. Griffin Ryan will come out. Gray Boy will come out as well. Nine seconds for Evanston. No two-point baskets tonight for the Wildcats so far. Lance Jones letting it run down. Now Ryan Bost, three seconds to go. Jones, step back, one more, no. Well, all threes for Evanston, all twos for Nutria. We had a few free throws thrown in as well. End of the first quarter, section championship game. Evanston leads it 20 to 11. Let's go to Mark Kruger. Here with Chris Livatino, the athletic director at Evanston Township. And uh, Chris, boy, you have to like the way your club is shooting the ball here in this first quarter, huh? Yeah, we came out real hot uh, from beyond the arc. And, uh, you know, we're, we know we're going to have to do that because they've got such a big team. And if we're not shooting it up, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a tough game for us. Looking for your second straight sectional championship. I understand there are other sports at Evanston that have had championship years as well. Yeah, you know, we just came off uh, last weekend. Our uh, boys swimming and diving program won the combined state championship, which was just an awesome experience. Our divers did a phenomenal job. Uh, Aiden Dillon did a great job. And Aaron Holtzmuller brought the, the trophy home for us in the uh, Athletes with Disabilities events. Thanks for stopping by. Good luck the rest of the game Appreciate tonight. Appreciate that. Thank All you right. very much. Jim, back up to you and Kenny. All right. Thank you, Mark. And for as nuts as I've always told you, the state meet, state mm -hmm. swim meet at Evanston is, right. it has to be 90 times crazier when they win it. Yeah, I know you love that state tournament. By the way, at Thornton High School, Maris leading Simeon 17 to 12, two minutes into the second quarter. Uh, we've seen and heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Rice had the lead. The other night on the Wolverines in the section semis. By the way, congratulations to Taylor Horton Tucker, named as the Sun Times Player of the Year. Well deserved. Yes. Well, well look at the shooting. Bombs away. Yep. Nutrier, all their points have come into paint. Five field goals all in the paint. So Evanston just bombs away. Consider this. Evanston has only made one more field goal then Nutrier, but the lead is nine because of the three-pointers. Trying to pass over the top of the zone. Griffin Ryan in the corner. Great catch in the corner by Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick wants to fire and does. He's short. Rebound by Jaheim Holden. And see, Evanston, they want to run. They do not want to give Nutrier a chance to set up. Holden can't hit the two. Bame with the rebound. Well, that's another thing about Evanston shooting twos. If you shoot them, you're probably not going to get the rebound with Gray Boy and Bame in there. Griffin Ryan, a little bit too much club. Tough rebound by Conahan, then he turned it over. Peters brings it up the floor. Beautiful pass. Holden had the shot block. Boy, Boy the Twin Towers are doing a great job defensively, Kenny. Oh, oh, they're doing a wonderful job defensively. The Wildkids can't get anything going on the inside. That's why everything is coming from the outside. But you just can't trade two-pointers for three-pointers. Nine-point lead for the Wildcats. Neither team has scored in a minute 15 here in the second quarter. Look at the patience. Another thing working in Evanston's favor, at least in the early going, they've only committed three fouls, which is a low number when you're playing against a team with big guys inside. Right. There, you're going to look at Coach Ellis. He has sent Matt Hall and Lance Jones back into the game after a little rest. Bost and Jaheim Holden will come out. I think we may see a lot of guys get a little bit of rest today yeah. because of the heat in here. Well, and you're going to need them in the fourth quarter. And you may need them longer than that. Yes. As Nutrier found out. Kirkpatrick, he misses the three. Tipped out, last touch by Hall, Nutrier basketball. Boy, Bray Boy gets away with one there, Jim, because it looked like he was over the back. The officials said no, and they give the ball back to Nutrier. 
Nutrier 0 for 5 from three-point land. Brayboy jump and a catch. Didn't hit the bucket. The timing was thrown off just a little bit by Hall's defense. From the corner, Elijah Bull hits the top of the backboard and then the basketball basket standard. And then it will go back. That's the that highest seven. arc I've seen all year. Yes. That one almost brought snow. <laughs> Elijah Bull, just a freshman has played a lot for Evanston this year. Long pass, Spencer Bain, blocked by Matt Hall. Well, what a block by Hall, then he controls it. Elijah Bull, bounce pass. Peters trying to get open, corner of the lane. The first two-point basket of the night for the Evanston Wildcats. And Blake Peters will take it. He's drained three threes, but he'll take any open shot that he can get. He is the leading scorer in the game with 11 points. And it's an 11-point lead right now for Evanston. Brayboy backing Hall down. Nice move to get free, and he finishes. Oh, that's a big-time move. That is a big-time move. Nice little spin move, taking the baseline for the easy layup. You give up that baseline, you're asking for trouble. Now, Nutria drops back, Jim, to that 1-3-1 one, one zone. It's so hard to see the length of those guys. Little jumper by Lance Jones. A little bit too much. Kirkpatrick. With a rebound, wants to run the floor, down the lane, shows the ball, and did he get fouled or did he travel? He got fouled. That's Matt Hall, and that's his second. And, you know, Kenny, here's a question for you. Matt Hall, foul trouble. A problem for Evanston or not a problem? Because if he goes out, then Mike Ellis brings in that lineup of the Greyhounds. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem because you do bring in the Greyhounds, and you want to make this an up-tempo game. Andrew Kirkpatrick, the senior on the line. But watch this block. What a beautiful block. Then he controls the basketball. That's the key. You don't need to block it out of bounds, but then you give it to the man, Blake Peters, for the first two-point shot tonight for Evanston that they make. Hall comes out of the game after the second foul, so Evanston with that small lineup in there once again. Kirkpatrick hits both free throws. Griffin Ryan will go out of the game for Nutrier. Matt Samuelson will come in. Well, when Hall goes down, if you can maintain this lead and give him a breather with his heat for the second half, you have to be happy if you're Evanston. Blake Peters, four of six shooting. He looks like he's kind of open there in the corner, but Samuelson is cheating over to that side of the zone. Well, if I'm Evanston, I'm not in a hurry. I'm going to take my time if Nutria wants to stay in this 1-3-1 one, one zone. Boss will make a move. He'll pull up from 15. That rattled in and out. And the rebound cleared by Silverstein. But that's a great shot by Boss. He did everything except go down. Big possession here for Nutria. They can cut it to a two-possession game. Little tall, but Conahan was able to get it. Conahan looked like he traveled. Did he get, whoop. And Bost and Conahan get into it a little bit. I thought it was going to be a call of a travel. The referee's doing a great job here of making sure the guys know, look, come on, guys, too big of a game for that. Don't, don't make us make a call that you're not going to like. Did he call it travel or jump ball? The difference is... It, it, it's a turnover, turnover, Kenny, because the arrow is still pointing. Okay. Evanston's, no, they, sw no, they, they switched called, it. They called held ball okay. because they switched the arrow. And that's crucial because now the next jump ball goes to Nutria. Intriguing basketball game so far. Another outside stop for the Wildcats. And that one rattles in. Lance Jones, his third three-pointer of the night. How long do you stay in the zone? They are shooting well from behind a three-point arc. Back to a 10-point lead for Evanston. Down low, Brayboy passed out of the double team and he hit the bottom of the rim and then he got the ball back and that's going to be a foul on Blake Peters, his Blake, second. Doesn't he do a wonderful job going into the offensive boards? He follows his shot. That's one thing you have to give him credit for doing. Brayboy does an outstanding job going to the offensive boards. Every time he takes a shot, he crashes and goes right to the ball. Let me correct the foul. It's on Jalen Gibson, not on Blake Peters. That's a big deal because Peters still only has one foul now. And that, Jim, is a wonderful shot, the one we had 
from underneath the basket, looking at Bray Boy's hair, that shows you how hot it is in here. I mean, he's looking at yep. his hair. He's soaking wet. Conahan goes out for Nutrier. Blake Peters goes to the bench for Evanston. Off the back of the rim. Loose ball grabbed by Griffin Ryan. He'll go up, and that was blocked by Lance Jones. Boy, Jones showing some hops. See, now if you're Evanston, Jim, you're not in a hurry. You have the lead. If they weren't staying in this zone, just throw the ball around. They're not, you're not in a five count yet. Just take your time. And that is exactly what the Wild Kits will do. Niles North tried this against Nutrier on Wednesday night, but Niles North did not execute it as well as Evanston does. The only team that does this better than Evanston is Simeon. Yes. Okay, now they're going to come out and get the five count started. Two fifty to go. Jalen Gibson drives corner of the lane, and I was going to say that had to be a travel. Hey, that was two euro steps. <laughs> that was a euro stump. <laughs> Elijah Bull comes out. But what Evanston did well there, Jim, was run time off the clock. They're in no hurry. They have the lead. A moment ago, Nutrier was down by seven and had a chance to go lower, couldn't convert. Griffin Ryan couldn't get it to fall. It looks like this is going to be on Jalen Christian, and it is. Christian, a junior who had just checked into the game, picks up a foul. And that is the sixth team foul on the Evanston Wildcats. Great movement without the basketball by Griffin and Ryan Jim to get open. Did a wonderful job curling towards the basket. Gets the entry pass. Those the contact is coming. As he misses the free throw. Two consecutive free throw misses for Nutrier. They are four out of seven from the line tonight. Matt Samuelson comes out of the game for Nutrier. Ryan missed them both. Brayboy got the rebound, put it up, couldn't hit. And that is going to be Tipped out last touch by Bain. Well, again, nobody does a better job going to the offensive board than Bray Boy. He wasn't able to control it, but he was able to tip it. Four offensive rebounds in the game tonight for the Nutrier Trevians. But another stop on defense for Evanston, and now they're going to try and put their lead back up to double digits. Lance Jones drives down the middle of the lane. No one can stop him. He'll go to the line for an and one. Boy, what a great move by Lance Jones. Watch this young man. Jim, right to the living room. Splits the double team with the left hand. Comes back to the right. Goes through two more defenders. What a great job. Right through the double team. Right around. One more. Lays it in for the to deuce. What a play by Lance Jones. Foul is on Bame, and they have that as his second personal foul. That was the first basket in the paint tonight for the Wildcats. The other two-point basket they had was by Blake Peters from the corner of the lane. Lance Jones is at it again, Kenny, 13 points. Oh, here comes the press by Eviston. Up the floor, leading Bame, and he stepped on the end line and then touched the basketball, so it goes back to Evanston. Actually, that was that's an advantage for Nutrier because it went right to Gibson after Bain saved it, and he was off to the races, as a friend of mine would say. Here they go, off to the races. Two minutes to go here in the second quarter. Nutrier back to the 1-3-1, one, one, using that length to make it very difficult to see. Long three, nothing but net. Well, Lance Jones saw it. <laughs> 15 points for Lance Jones. Four three-pointers. Evanston with their biggest lead of the night at 15 points. Well, the one thing about the 1-3-1 zone, Jim, if you can get the ball in the corner around that baseline, it's going to be open. Here's it again. He's just going to swing it. Jones, you're going to come out. Nope. Okay, Patrick doesn't come out to challenge him. See, this is going to be open. That shot is there all night with the 1-3-1 zone, and the Wildcats have done a wonderful job of making those shots tonight. 
15 seconds left at Thornton Township High School. Marist and Simeon tied at 23. In the game? In the second, in oh, the second quarter, quarter, I'm open. sorry. Did I say second half? Oh, no, you just said 15 seconds left. Oh, what a game. 15 seconds, second <laughs> quarter. What a game we have here. The Wildkids putting on a great shooting exhibition. This was about the point of the game on Tuesday night where Evanston had a 20-point lead on Loyola. And Loyola actually came back and tied it in the second half before running out of gas and losing by 10. Well, don't think Coach Mike Ellis will not remind his guys there we are. of that. Hey, there we are. We're right in the middle of it with all our new, all close, friends, all our new yeah. closest friends. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're about seven rows deep now. We have a lot of people behind us. And I'm assuming they're standing on the wrestling mats back there that are rolled up against the wall? Yes, they are. So to they can see. Jam-packed crowd here at Maine East High School. School originally built in 1929. And again, the configuration, they play their game. This is the field house. So these stands all move, and then they have track meets and everything they need to have in here. Oh, look out. That is, go that is going to be the second foul on Blake Peters. And Jim, I'm, I'm glad you talked about this being a field house. Before the game, I talked to the Maine East Athletic Director. I said, are you going to lift up the blue tarp underneath the far basket and put more seats? He said, we thought about it. We actually lifted up, but then we remembered that these young men played their first two games with that tarp down. We did not want to change the shooting background for tonight's game. So that's why they didn't put more bleachers in underneath the far basket. Missing the front end of the one and one is Sam Silverstein. The missed free throws are starting to pile up for Nutrier. Lance Jones is in trouble, made a nice play just to get rid of it. I, I would have put the bleachers under the basket and got the money. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. Look for Everson to go for one last shot here. Evanston has outscored Nutrier 11-5, and remember, Nutrier got off to a good start in this quarter. Well, you're going to hold the ball unless you can get a look like that as Jalen Gibson, the freshman, drives in and gets two. Well, exactly, they did what they wanted to do. They were going to hold it for one shot, but then Nutrier came out to play one-on-one -on -one, man to man basketball, and Gibson knew he could just run around the defender. One minute to go here in the second quarter. Brayboy will finish that off. Boy, yeah, Brayboy used an elbow to get free, and boy, Gibson is hurt. Are they gonna, are they gonna stop play for Gibson? He was holding his eye. He has the basketball now. Oh, and he gets his pocket picked by Kirkpatrick. Goes up the floor and lays it in. Well, you know what he was doing? Now they're gonna call the timeout. He, he got hit in the eye on the last offensive possession in the paint. So he was holding his eye, and they gave him the basketball. So instead of calling a timeout, he just let the ball go, and see, he'll he'll lose the ball here. See, he's like holding his eye, and he's very like a days ago with it. And Kirk Patrick saw it and came in and gets an easy layup. And now Gibson will go to the bench to get first aid. You know what? Call a timeout. You know, he got hit in the eye, the, el the elbow. The referee let it go. But then on the way down on offense, it just can't. Let the basketball drop and stay there. If you're hurt, say, hey, coach, time out. I need to come out. Trevian's trying to get to the super sectional round for the first time since 2015. They actually went to the supers in back-to-back -back years, 14 and 15. They were the number one seed in this section three years in a row. And they have been supplanted the last couple of years in this section as the number one by Evanston. All right, so what do you do here if you're Evanston? Because if you give it back to Nutrier, they have a chance to make it a 10-point game at halftime. Well, if Nutrier stays in the zone, oh, there's going to be a hole before the ball is inbound. And that's going to be on Brian Conahan. But Nutrier has two fouls to give. Yes. So if they stay in the zone, once the ball gets past half court, I just play for one shot. If they go man to man, and if I feel like I can get by my man and get an easy shot, then I attack the basket. Shaheem Holden will bring it up for the Wildcats. Yeah, they're going to go man to man. And they will spread the floor. You don't have a five count from the officials yet. Now you do. Holden begins to move. 
working on Conahan. 18 seconds left. Holden not afraid to back into the corner. And that goes off the leg of, I believe it was Silverstein, and then coming up with it for Dutrier is Matt Moser, and then it's stolen away, and that'll have plenty of juice on it. And so, it looked like we might have a very interesting end of the quarter, but neither team able to convert in that final minute. So Evanston will go to the locker room at halftime, holding a 33 to 20 lead in this 4A section final. Let's go it down on the floor, here's Mark Kruger. Jim, thank you very much. Here with Mike Ellis, the head coach for Evanston. And uh, coach, leads have been hard to maintain this week. How do you plan to maintain your 13-point lead going into the second half? Well, we feel like it should be more than 15 because of the rebounding factor. You know, they've had half their points, 10 of their 20 are second chance points. So if we don't do a more solid job on the boards, it's not the first shot, it's the second shot that's really having them get some momentum back and catch up when we could get that rebound and run with it. They like to play that 1-3-1 one, one zone. If they continue to do that in the second half, is there a chance that you would like to just uh, take the air out of the ball? No, we're, that's going to be our offense. You know, we got to score no matter what defense they present. Uh, the minute you try to hold the ball, then that plays into their hands. We're going to score whether it's man or zone until it gets to the last few minutes of the game where we're playing time and score. Right now, we're just playing a score. There's no time factor. Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Mike Ellis, the head coach of Evanston. Jim, back to you and Kenny. All right, thank you very much, Mark. And for Mike Ellis, le uh, the leading scorer, second leading scorer in the court in the half was Blake Peters, had 11 points, three of them coming on three-pointers. Yeah. And we talked about him being the difference. He did not have a very good game the last time these two teams met, and he's been a difference maker so far. Back with more from Maine East High School in just a moment. Halftime in the CN100 Game of the Week, Evanston leading to Trier 33-20. You're watching the Comcast Network. CN100, Chicago. CN100 Sports has long provided you with the best high school sports coverage in Chicago. But don't forget, we've got your favorite professional teams covered as well. From the preseason rallying cry through the playoff run, CN100 Sports is there with exclusive content and interviews from our top coaches and players, not only on the field, but in your community. If you want to see elite Chicago athletes in their prime or long before they become pros, your number one source is CN100 Sports. Hi, I'm Cindy Bravos. On this edition of Community Connection, we welcome Sheridan Turner from Cole Children's Museum, highlight art from Carla Bank, and explore the art behind major court cases with courtroom sketch artist Thomas Johnny. We'll take you on location to relax with sound meditation. Plus, we have Alyssa Gambla making one of her favorite desserts. All this and more on Community Connection. See it here first. Watch this episode and other exclusive stories on Comcast On Demand. Join CN100 Sports for an inside look at the 2017 Mr. Basketball of Illinois, Mark Smith. Follow his improbable journey at Edwardsville High School from the baseball diamond to earning the greatest individual basketball award in the state. Get to know the Fighting Illini's freshman guard in this Sports Weekly Special. Go to CN100.TV for a list of airtimes or view this program anytime with Xfinity On Demand. X1 users, scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. Relive the fun and excitement from the 2018 Cubs Convention with CN100 Sports. Starting with Cubs Community Service Week and capped off with the 33rd Annual Cubs Convention. Hear from members of the organization and their diehard fans as CN100 Sports gets you ready for the upcoming season on the north side. Check out CN100.tv for airtimes or view this program anytime with Xfinity On Demand by selecting Get Local and choosing CN100. X1 users scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. The Trevians got some moves, but Evanston <laughs> has had more moves than the Trevians in the opening half, 33-20. Evanston leading New Trier. Winner of this game will play either Lake Zurich or Barrington in the Super Sectionals coming up on Tuesday. Story of the half, three-pointers by the Wildcats, two-pointers inside for New Trier. Let's get a look at the highlights from the opening half of the action. We talked about a difference in this game. The last game would be if Blake Peters was hitting his shots, and he was. Yes. Blake Peters had a total of 11 points during that opening half. 
three three-pointers for Peters. On the other end of the floor, the Twin Towers did a pretty nice job for Nutrier in the early going. Nice pass by Kieran Brayboy inside Spencer Bain. He puts it in. But Lance Jones for the second game in a row, a big story for Evanston. Comes up, playing free safety, makes the steal, steps back, hits a three. That was one of four three-pointers that he had during that opening half. Kieran Brayboy was leading scorer for Nutrier, had 10 points during that opening half of play. Didn't get it the first time. Kenny stayed with it, got a point. So he did a great job going to the offensive boards. He's the best going to the offensive boards I've seen all year. Then Bame again, working it down low. Nice move of the baseline by Bame. Goes to the baseline to go around Matt Hall to get two more. And how about a little more Lance Jones, Kenny? Splits the double team to the wonderful job dribbling the basketball. Splits the defenders, gets to the basket for the three-point play. And how about a little three-pointer the easy way by Mr. Jones. Pull up jump shot, nothing but net. The Wildcats doing a wonderful job shooting from the three-point strike. And this is Jalen Gibson, another freshman who gets a lot of playing time for Evanston, able to drive inside. And that was with about a minute and a half to go when it looked like they might run it down. And then oh, Evanston was going to just run some clock and run the half court. They got a little bit lax. Andrew Kirkpatrick comes up with a steal, takes to the other end, and he lays it in. Let's go down to Mark Kruger, Mark. All right, Jim, thank you very much. I'm here with Steve Schantz. He is the athletic director here at Maine East. And Steve... Boy, oh boy, you guys have done an amazing job of hosting. How long did it take and how many people did it take to do it? <laughs> I can't even count. It's been last three or four weeks. We had a girls sectional as well, so we got to kind of practice a little bit, and that was great. And uh, it's taken a, a village, honestly, to run this. It's been great. Just kind of curious. I mean, it's been a packed house all three nights. How many people did you have to turn away for tonight? I must have said no about 150 times today. Yeah. Now let me ask you, the blue curtain behind us, uh, was there a talk about removing that and putting bleachers at this end? We did, we uh, attempted it, we, we drew it up about halfway and put bleachers there to see if it'd work and it just didn't work right. So let me ask you about next year, will you submit again to be host again? How does that work? Well, we submit every year, I think it goes on a rotation basis, but yeah, we'd love to host again, it's been a blast. Congratulations on a great turnout and uh, some great basketball here at Maine East. Great. Thanks for coming out. Go All Maine East. All right, Jim, back upstairs to you. By the way, in case anyone is wondering, according to the Cook County Regional Office of Education Superintendent, the approved occupancy of this field house, 2,885. Hey. And all our friends. And all of our friends behind us. All our friends joining oh. us tonight. Yeah. We can see we can see beyond the railing, by the way. <laughs> I feel like we're in the Blues Brothers. Got, <laughs> Got the cage in front of us. Well, Nutrier dominated points in the paint, but Evanston just marvelous beyond the arc. Boy, look at that. 8 out of 13. That is unbelievable where Nutrier is 0 for 5. And look at Nutrier. Rebounded. We thought they would dominate. You don't get many leads with only six rebounds. Evanston doing a wonderful job getting doubled up on the boards. So far in this section, the game on Wednesday night and half of the game tonight, Nutrier is three for 23 beyond the arc. They are going to need to turn that around if they are going to advance, and they only have a half to do so. When we come back, third quarter action. It's been a great one so far. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a moment on the CN100 Game of the Week. You're watching the Comcast Network. CN100, Chicago. Oh, how did he get that up there? Backdoor cut. How about that? Best pass I've seen all year. When you're hot, you're hot. Watch Chicago Land's best high school matchups with Xfinity On Demand by selecting Get Local and choosing all HS Sports. For Xfinity X1 customers, scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. I have to tell you, Kenny, that is the tallest, as far as floor to ceiling, student section I have ever seen. Those are the new Trier students. And there has to be 40 rows of them. At least. I mean, it is amazing 
how many students they have here tonight. The Evanston kids are down on the floor in front of us, and they're a little bit more spread, spread out. out. There's just as many of them. But, uh, well, there's a guy who has certainly had a great section so far, Lance Jones. And he's hoping that he gets to play three more basketball games. Let's go to Mark Kruger. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Here with Coach Fricky. Coach, what did you tell your team here at the break? We were in this situation before. We need to persevere and come back in this game. Good luck. Jim, back to you. Well, they were down 22 against Niles yeah. North on Wednesday night. Got the game to overtime. And then uh, they had actually two overtimes before they were able to win the game. By the way, some other section final scores. Simeon and Maris tied at 23 at halftime. Bennett Academy leads Willowbrook 15 to nine at the end of the first quarter. Halftime, Curie leads Whitney Young 31 to 21. Well, what a second half you should have here. The last half of basketball for one of these two outstanding basketball teams. By the way, Evanston's last loss was to New Trier three Friday nights ago. New Trier needs to come out and get going quickly. Yes, they have the basketball gym. They need to score. Griffin Ryan has it to start. Gray boy, nice catch, goes over Matt Hall. Couldn't hit, Bain tapped it out. What a play. Conahan got the rebound. Ryan inside, and Matt Hall had his hands on it, and he was the last to touch. Boy, Gray boy does a wonderful job, Jim, of moving to the basket. He's always slashing towards the basket. They had to back up the Trevian. <laughs> Both teams are now working toward their respective classmates here in the second half. Open three-pointer. Conahan is good. And away from the basket, we have a foul. Yeah, away from the basket, Gray Boy went down. So count the basket plus a foul. It's a three-point basket. Then you're going to get a foul. Here it again. Boy, what a wonderful job of moving the basketball. They do a wonderful job with a nice skip pass. And you see Cunningham with the three-pointer, and then Hall underneath the basket is called for a foul. Third foul on Hall, but more importantly, the ball goes right back to Nutrier. Oh, and they turn it over. Hall got it back. That would have been huge. They could have, say, gotten 4 nothing run right away without Evanston seeing the ball. From the corner, Blake Peters a little bit long, and a rebound by Bain. Long pass. Oh, that was that was actually a good pass by Kirkpatrick. Ryan couldn't quite get there. Kirkpatrick threaded the needle, but it's a turnover. Yeah, that was a beautiful pass, but Ryan just couldn't get there. But Jim, that is not Nutria's style of no. basketball. Trying to get in transition. I think he would rather have them do what they do best, which is make this a slow down half court ball game. On the move, Jaheim Holden misses. Griffin Ryan the rebound. Fourth possession of the second half. For Nutria, they've only scored once. And you see, slow it down, get it across half court for the open shot. Bame a little long with the three. Nice job of boxing out by Jaheim Holden. The Wildcats want to run, and that hit the foot of Griffin Ryan. Skate save and a beauty. Evanston will keep the basketball. So the Wildcats have not been on the board so far in the third quarter. Jaheim Holden wants to drive baseline, he does. And then Hall was moving into rebounding position, almost had the ball taken away. And Peters had it stripped away by Conahan. But we're going to, no. there's going to be a foul called on Conahan. That's his second. Yeah, the official underneath the basket didn't call it. It's the official at three quarters court called it. I think there's obviously a little contact right there. Yeah, there's a lot of contact right there. The official underneath the basket didn't call it. But the one three quarters court saw it and said, no, I'll get it. It's a foul. Peters first free throw of the night. 76% free throw shooter. As well as he shoots three pointers, I'm surprised he didn't go all the way to the yeah, end of the free throw back, circle. Back up. Because you can go back. <laughs> it's more comfortable. Well, his spot, I mean, he hits threes from all over the place, but he's especially deadly from the wings. Okay. 
Evanston trying to make Nutria really work. Kirkpatrick, the lane is open. Nice dish to Bray, boy, and he'll finish. Boy, nobody stopped the dribble penetration. Wonderful penetration there by Kirkpatrick to drop it off. If you're a Trevian, you have to know that if you can get Hall to come at you, there's nobody that can match up with either Bray Boy or with Bain. Right, and if you're Evanston, then you have to stop that dribble penetration. Step back, Lance Jones, and he didn't get the roll. Nice rebound by Blake Peters. He's known for hitting threes, but he does some hard work underneath, and he puts it in. That's the first offensive rebound for Evanston in the game. And what a beautiful one it was. 12-point lead, the two teams trading baskets right now. Fine with Evanston, not so much for Nutrier. Top of the key. Conahan was open for a moment, but that opportunity ended quickly, and that is going to be number four on Matt Hall. Wow. That hurts, but now you bring Gibson in and you have your Greyhounds. So you really have to make this an up-tempo game now if you're Evanston because Hall has four. So we probably will not see him the rest of the third quarter. Griffin Ryan spun free, and he'll do the little finger roll. Well, what a nice move, spinning free. Well, you use your body, you feel the contact, you know where your defender is, then you just spin away and get a nice, easy layup. That is a really, really big-time play. 20 of the 27 points for Nutrier have come in the paint. Evanston wants to pull Nutrier out. They have an advantage off the dribble with this lineup. Jalen Gibson, a lot of playing time for a freshman. Blake Peters, tons of playing time as a freshman. Underneath, Jaheim Holden. He screened off Kirkpatrick and got the basket. Boy, nice job by Everton Jim taking their time, getting Nutria out of that zone, finding the open man. Griffin Ryan took one of the chops, no call. No look pass. And jammed home by Curon Brayboy is 14. Boy, Brayboy is in great position all night in the paint. But, but what a great pass. But right now, Nutrier is just trading baskets with Evanston. So they need to stop. Coming up on the midway point of the third quarter. And dribbling it off his own foot was Jaheim Holden. Ryan came up with it. Nice pass to Bain. Gave it back to Ryan. He's down the lane. What a move. Protected the basketball and knocked it home. Boy, Bame had nowhere to go. He just looks for a streaky Ryan coming right down the middle of the floor. Single-digit lead for Evanston. They're up by eight. Lance Jones draws the triple, triple team. Blake Peters from the corner. Hit the front of the iron. Gray boy with the rebound. What a rebound. And oh. then we have a grab, and they're looking right at Blake Peters. No, it's on Gibson, his second. Boy, look at this pass, Jim. You stop, don't get to stop the dribble penetration. You get the nice slam dunk there by Bray Boy. Then Bray Boy does a wonderful job seeing the slashing. Griffin and Ryan going right towards the basket. Hits him right in stride for the easy layup. And Nutrier all of a sudden taking control of the third quarter. Mike Ellis sensing what I think everybody in the place is that, wait a minute, it's an eight-point game and Nutrier's got the ball. Grab a timeout. Game of the Week wraps up coverage of the high school basketball season with the Chicago State University 4A Super Sectional. Tune in on Wednesday, March 14th at 7 to see who is going to advance to the state semis. For additional air dates and times, visit our website at cn100.tv. This game will be either Simeon or Marist against Whitney Young or Curie. So it's going to be a great ball game. And just to give you an update, Simeon trailing Maris midway through the fourth quarter, 32 to 27. Curie is leading Whitney Young by 10 at the half. Bennett leads Willowbrook 40-32 going to the fourth quarter. Um, Lake Zurich, the winner of that game, will play the winner of this game. Lake Zurich leads Barrington 50 to 49, six minutes left. And then in Pekin, Belleville West is leading Moline 26-20 at the half. Here it's Evanston by eight, but Nutrier has the ball. Kirkpatrick, runner, couldn't get it. What a rebound and a putback by Curon Brayboy. It's a six-point game. Boy, you know what? We talked about him in the open. We talked about him all night. He is just unbelievably talented in the, point, in the paint. 16 points, 
Five rebounds for Curon Brayboy, who's playing on a little bit of a nicked up ankle. Yeah, you can see the brace on the ankle. Blake Peters had his shot blocked. Ball came out. And it is a backcourt violation on the Evanston Wildcats. And Peters now, is down. If a three-pointer is the result of this possession, it's a one-possession lead for Evanston. Peters is up. Wow. Hall came up to the scorer's table. He's going to go back. Well, you see Peters and his own man. That's it was Lance Gibson. Jones. With a G Gibson or Jones comes down on top of him. I thought it was Jones. Nutrier on a 6-0 run, and I'm telling you what, folks. Big possession. Steal by Peters. He'll drive to the basket. Had it knocked away by Kirkpatrick, and then it was touched by Ryan, but still. Yeah, write that down. That you, could be the play of the game. You have to be happy with the hustle by the Trevians, but Evanston will keep the basketball. And I'm going to tell you why that could be the play of the game, because if he gets a dunk here, that really gets this big crowd exploding again and really gets Evanston back into the ball game, get the emotions flowing again. That is a great play. Crossover and... Folks, I am telling you I would love to get the physics explanation on the spin rate you have to have on the basketball to get that one to go in. Well, I just would like to be able to be able to do it. <laughs> Little runner, Kirkpatrick didn't get it. Big rebound at the other end by Jalen Gibson. Evanston, they're being disciplined. If they don't see a chance to get odd numbers, they pull it back out. And again, and again. another spinner by Jaheim Holden. And what a moment ago was a chance for Nutrier to cut it to a one possession game is now back to a 10 point lead for Evanston. Three pointer on the way, that one well short, getting his own rebound with Silverstein. Kirkpatrick, he'll try the three and he'll hit it. Boy, Kirkpatrick's wide open, Jim. You have to put a hand in his face. Ryan Bowles did not put a hand up. Kirkpatrick said, if you're not going to put a hand in my face, I'm going to take the shot. That was just the second three pointer of the night and the fifth three pointer of the sectional. For the Trevians, it is back to a seven-point lead. Boy, how do you spin this away? Look at this. How, you know, I don't know how you do that. With that little spin, he just flips it back over his head, not once, but twice. Yep, he came down the next possession and basically did the same thing. So the Trier faithful have seen their team rally only to be repelled by the Wildkids. Well, I don't know what repel means, but the Wildkids are not giving up. Don't forget, you can rewatch this game with Xfinity On Demand, and what you do is you select Get Local, and then you choose All High School Sports, and if you're an Xfinity X1 customer, you scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local, and then you can watch this game in high definition. Ooh, and what a game you will see in high definition, because this is an outstanding ball game tonight. Critical juncture of the game, though. Evanston had Loyola catch them after leading by 20 on Tuesday night, but then started to extend the lead. They have to be smart. Jaheim Holden shovels it off. Jalen Gibson, and then Peters tipped it away. Got it right to Gibson. I think that got blocked, and Gibson put it in anyway. But what a great job, though, on the offensive boards by the smaller Wildcats. Remember, Hall is on the bench. Kirkpatrick picked up his dribble. He was in trouble, got it off to Ryan. Bame, the high post. Peters comes up with it again. Ryan bossed up the floor, and he saw four blue shirts in front of him, and he wisely pulled the ball out in the corner. Blake Peters for three. Back of the iron, and that'll be an easy rebound for Silverstein. Boy, that's his spot, too. Whoops. Turned over at midcourt. Lance Jones blocked by Silverstein. Stolen away from behind, and that is going to be a foul on Jaheim Holden. Evanston fans do not like the call. Yeah, they're very upset. They thought there was a lot of contact on that layup. But see, the players can't get caught up with the crowd now. The crowd's upset, but you have to remember, we have a ball game to play. Oh, my. That would have been the most athletic play of the year if Ryan Boss could have kept that oh. inbounds. <laughs> I don't even know how he got a hold of it, a hand on it. He got a hand on it, and he was trying to get his feet back down in the, in the court. Couldn't quite do it. 
Stolen away. Jaheim Holden drives. Blocked by Silverstein, but he'll pick up a foul. Well, now the crowd is happy. Silverstein goes for the block, but the officials say there's a lot of body there with Holden. Nutrier has to be strong and smart with the basketball. You cannot afford turnovers against the number one seed in your region. Holden is two out of two from the foul line tonight. Leading free throw shooter for the Wildcats. Conahan comes in. Bame goes out. 57 seconds left to go. Well, that's good. So Bame will get this 57 seconds plus the minute or so in between quarters. Evanston from the line tonight, seven out of seven. Griffin Ryan goes out. Matt Samuelson comes in for Nutrier. Boy, the Trevians had the ball and a chance to make it a one possession game, but they did not score. And then Evanston's gone on a little bit of a run to get the lead back up to 11 points. It was a 13 point lead at halftime. Skate save and a beauty that time it's Lance Jones looking like Dennis DeJordi. <laughs> How about Tony Esposito? Vince Varicello's favorite all-time goalkeeper. Well, with Matt Hall on the bench, Everston in the zone on defense. Nearly taken away by Peters. Samuelson drives. He was fouled. Boy, did a good job getting the baseline, Jim, but a lot of contact. A nice block, but the whistle had already blown. Gibson Fouls. came over with a block, but... Sorry, too little, Kenny. too late. Jalen Gibson committed the foul. That is his third, and the scoreboard has gone out on the other end of the floor. Okay. So they are going. <laughs> it either overheated or somebody kicked out the plug. Maybe a little bit of both. Our score is 47 36, and the scoreboard at this end of the floor, we are behind it, so we can't, we can't, can't see, see it. it. Yeah, it's. We can see the side of it very well, but we cannot tell if it is on or not. What well, you know what's funny? When I got here today, oh, that, they, that's the one, yeah, it's gone that too. That one's out too. When I came in here today, there were three Kamea trucks outside of the school. Now, you, you're right, there were. Yeah, they were working. There and were. I was telling our crew, hey, did you guys blow a fuse? Because there's three Kamea trucks outside on this big box outside of the school working. Well, I maybe we blew a few. Again, this building was constructed, the main part of it, 1929. And it, it, this building has probably been rewired, you know, at least a half a dozen times over with just the change in technology. Because just quite simply, 1929, when you built this place, you just needed electricity. Right. But now you've got to have Internet access and all the things you need to operate a school in the year 2018. So... Yeah. So they have done an unbelievable job of updating this building. So we have the scoreboard back on. I wouldn't have bet you somebody just kicked out the uh, plug. Nick Mitrovic didn't pay the electric bill. <laughs> well, they've got a pretty good lacrosse program at Nutrier, I would say. Almost every year when we do the state lacrosse championship game, the Trevians are in it. What? 36.2. And remember, when we last left you, Gibson had committed a foul on Samuelson, so Samuelson is on the line. He knocks it in. I think Mark Kruger has some info for us. Mark? Yeah, Steve Schatz, I was here. I just talked to him. A young lady just kicked the plug. Told you. Put yep. it back in. Steve Steve told me he fixed it, so they, they're okay with the, with the bill. Uh, All That's right. Okay. So we, we will not have to have a referendum here in the main township high school district. 30 seconds to go. Single digit lead for Evanston. It's a nine point margin with 26 seconds to go. Wild kids just letting it run. Double team in the ball. Not in a hurry. 10 seconds. And Lance Jones, boy, he got bailed out. Oh, did he get bailed out? He took a little leaner shot that wasn't close. He gets bailed out with the foul. Sam Silverstein's second foul tonight. 
Lance Jones one for one from the line. He's a 56% free throw shooter on the year. That is the first free throw miss by the Wildcats tonight. And so, what, did you notice, Jim? No legs. That means he's a little bit tired. That was the upper body, kind of like a shot put. Jalen Christian in for Evanston. Andrew Kirkpatrick in for Nutrier. It's for a 10 point lead. So having 3,000 people in here, it sure got quiet, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really did. And that is going to be a foul, I believe. I no, it's going to work. I thought it was going to be on Christian. Instead, it is going to go against Conahan. We're not in the bonus. Well, let me take that back. It, it, it is on Christian. Two seconds to go from beyond half court, wide right. And so. Evanston gave up a little bit of their lead there in the third quarter. It was 13 at the half. It is nine going to the fourth quarter. 47-38, Evanston leads Nutrier in this section championship game. Let's go to Mark Kruger. Jim, thank you very much. Here with Augie Fontanetta. He is the athletic director at Nutrier. And uh, Augie, you guys came back on Wednesday night. Can you do it again tonight? Well, I sure hope we got enough left in our gas tank. You know, Evanston's an excellent team. We go back and forth every time we play them. So hopefully we can uh, put something up in the fourth quarter to come back strong. Let me ask you about Nutria Athletics. As far as your whole program, all your sports, year in and year out, you guys seem to be the most successful at the top of that list almost every year. How do you maintain that high level of success year in and year out? Well, I mean, really, it's a combination of our kids and, and our community who put forth a lot of effort to, you know, make sure that we have quality quality facilities, quality opportunities, and our coaches. Our coaches do a tremendous job with our teams. We have a, a lot of stability at our coaching positions, which allows for our coaches to grow and, and be successful. Okay, thanks for your time. Good luck in the fourth quarter here. All right, thanks. Jim, back up to you and Kenny. Mark, thank you very much. And while the Trevian dances here at Maine East, meanwhile at Thornton Township High School, I think we can start really paying attention now. Four minutes to go, Maris leading Simeon 45-42. Mm. Well, Maris has had a great year, and he lost a lot of players. Yep. They had guys that transferred out for no reason, just basketball reasons. Nutrier right now trails by the same margin that they trailed by at the end of the first quarter. So. They dug themselves a hole early and have not been able to climb out of it. The closest they have been is six points. Evanston was four of 10 from the field in the third quarter. They will be extremely patient this quarter, I guarantee you. Remember Matt Hall, their one big guy that can match up with Brayboy and Bain is on the bench with four fouls. And we have all sorts of pushing and shoving. It's going to be a reach going over. Going underneath, and it is going to go against Christians. the Evanston Wildcats. Christian trying to get an offensive rebound. So Christian picks up his third foul, and more importantly, that foul puts Nutrier into the bonus. So they will shoot free throws the rest of the way now. Griffin Ryan 0 for 2 from the line. And Nutrier has only three team fouls. So that can be crucial. Nutrier right now, seven out of 13 from the line. They need to pick that up here in the fourth quarter to have a chance. Ryan missed the second one. Bain got the rebound, trying for the three-point play backwards, and he got it. Boy, is he good. Is he good or what? He has just been dominant in the paint tonight. Seven rebounds for Baim, and this is the closest that Nutrier has been since the first quarter. Down low, Jalen Christian puts it in. Boy, what a nice bounce pass by Holden. He saw Christian there by himself. Nice little bounce pass. Kirkpatrick picked up his dribble, and Conahan will take it. Conahan to Baim high post. Conahan for three, got it. Well, they ran a little high-low. 
Second three-pointer of the night for Conahan, and it's a five-point game, the closest Nutrier has been since the first quarter. Well, head it out high, kick it down low, kick it back out high. Jones leans in, a little out of control. It was last touch by Jalen Christian, and Nutrier has a chance to make it a one-possession game. Well, I watch this play, Jim. I love it. You kick it high, you kick it low, back out high before the defense can rotate back out. Wonderful play there by Nutrier. Great recognition there by Bain. A Jalen for Jalen sub for Mike Ellis. Jalen Gibson goes in for Jalen Christian. Double teamed in the backcourt. Conahan picked up his dribble, got it to Ryan. Now Ryan triple team. Timeout, Nutrier. Nutrier calls a timeout because the time it was a wasting. Yes, and remember in high school basketball, your coach can call the timeout. The player on the floor does not have to call the timeout. And that timeout came from the bench. Xfinity On Demand presents prep profile and insight into today's high school student athletes. Here's a sneak peek at Kia Apostolou of Maine East girls basketball. I was looking at going into sports medicine. I wanted to be an athletic trainer. Um, I'm starting to look at colleges. I'm trying to look for like D2 colleges because I also want to play basketball still. But I haven't really decided which one like I want to go to yet. To view Kaya's entire profile on demand, go to Get Local and then CN100. X1 users start at the Xfinity Services tab. A lot of history in this field house. A lot of banners hanging up. We talked about the banners in the 40s. How about those guys, 68, 69, and 66, 67, probably wondering after graduation if they were going to Vietnam? I think, wow. I, think, yeah. I think about those things in these older high schools. What those kids were thinking about is they went through their senior year. The seniors for New Trier trying to get back into the super sectionals. The guys for Evanston trying to make their second state straight trip. Three minutes to go at Thornton Township High School. Simeon now leads by two. Bennett is leading Willowbrook 60 to 39 midway through the fourth quarter. Lake Zurich leading Barrington 67-55 with a minute to go. Kirkpatrick into the double team. Bame was open, but a little bit outside of his range. He'll let the three-pointer fly. Boy, they're patient. Bame drives baseline, backed his way in. Ryan top of the key. They want a great shot out of the stoppage. Bame for three, back of the iron, no, and a falling rebound by Jaheim Holden. And he's able to maintain possession. And then he got fouled by Kirkpatrick, and Kirkpatrick got knee on knee from J uh, Jaheim Holden. Well, how was Holden able to hold on to that rebound? He was falling backwards when he comes away with the basketball, and he's able to dribble it up court to get fouled. Hit it again, now knee on knee. Boy, this hurts Ooh. right there. Oh, I've done that a million times. When I had a kneecap. <laughs> I'm one short now. Five forty to go here in the fourth quarter. Now remember, if Blake Peters is open, he has the green light, no matter what the time or what the margin is. Does that mean that Jalen Gibson doesn't have the green light, Kenny? He was wide open. Well, I think he just wants to make sure before he takes the shot that it's a good shot. He's trying to run clock. Now, that's five team fouls now on Nutrier. Spencer Bain picks up the foul. That is his third. Evanston is an outstanding free throw shooting team. They have three guys over 75%. Back into the game is Sam Silverstein. Five-point margin. We've been stuck here for a little while. Peters quickly covered by Conahan. Boy, they are not even looking no. into the corner at Jalen Gibson. Look at how wide open he is, Kenny. Yeah, they're not even looking at the basket. Can't score if you don't look at the basket. 
You know, Obviously, they're not looking to score. They're keeping an eye on Peters on the far side of the floor, way up there at the top, but they are just leaving Gibson by himself, and that is going to be a foul on Griffin Ryan, his second, and that is team foul number six. Boy, Peters was wide open, too, but they're not looking to score. But Conahan is cheating and keeping an eye on him. Now they, they switch, they switch Gibson and Peters now. There's Gibson, nice pass. Into the corner, Gibson, they're just leaving him out there. And he'll just stand there, he'll let the clock run. It's not in a hurry. Peters dropping in on the weak side. He was the oh. low block, and Gibson maybe being a little too disciplined. Boy, that would have been a layup for Peters. Yep. I'll give the Wildcats credit. They are doing exactly what Mike Ellis wants them to do. Oh, they got Gibson underneath by himself. He goes up, and he puts it in. Boy, did a great job, too, Jim, with the head fake. A wonderful job with the pump fake. Seven-point lead for the Wildcats, under four minutes to go. Silverstein for three, front of the iron, no. Rebound by Ryan Bost. And Evanston will take their time bringing it up the floor. Another skate save, that time it's Kirkpatrick. Oh, Nutrier with more, more kicks than I've seen in a long time. Boy, look at that nice pass. One, two. Boy, you know what, it looked like he may have moved his foot, but Still I, pretty nice with the pump fakes. I've seen worse not get called. Me too. <laughs> Under three and a half to go. Bost feeds Gibson. What a he block. won't shoot the three, but he's cheating in now. And he got fouled by Brian Conahan. Boy, and I now it's Conahan, bonus time. Yeah, I thought Conahan had it. I really did. Looked like he had it all ball. But the official didn't hesitate. He blew the whistle right away. Simeon leading by five, 53-48 with 15 seconds to go. Gibson misses a free throw. Samuelson comes in for Conahan. Jaheim Holden and Ryan Boss back into the game for Evanston. So it looks like we will see Simeon Tuesday night. Yep, it took them a while, but they're gonna, it looks like they're going to get it tonight, Kenny. Samuelson into the front court, and he was fouled by Lance Jones. Boy, Jones can't, you can't reach in like that, Jim. Samuelson is two out of two from the foul line tonight. Lake Zurich leading by nine over Barrington with 30 seconds to go. Well, when you reach in like that, the whistle is going to blow, and you don't want to stop the clock if you're Evanston. Bame in, Griffin Ryan out, and here comes Matt Hall back into the game with four fouls. So Hall comes in mainly for defense, rebounding and blocking shots. It is Silverstein, not Samuelson, who'll shoot the free throw. Silverstein is 0 for 1. Hits an absolutely critical free throw. Conahan back in. Samuelson will go out. A five-point game with 3.12 to go. Two crucial free throws. This is the closest, or matches the closest, that Evanston has been in the second half. He had nowhere Penny, to go. What did you say earlier? Stay off the baseline. And it dribbled the ball with nobody on you to dribble it out of bounds, but you don't want to go on the sidelines against the press. Here it again, and let's see. Ooh, Ooh that well, goes off Silverstein's right foot. College, they'd be reviewing that, but Can we I don't review, review it in high school. Bame fires it in. Bray Boy works on the man with four personal fouls. Had to pass out of it and turned it over. 
Lance Jones gave it away the last time. He gets an assist out of this one. Yeah, what a nice job by Lance Jones, stopping at the free throw lines like we always say. Dishes it off for easy layup. Back to a seven point game and a little bit out of control was Andrew Kirkpatrick. Is that Hall? But he's going to get out of it and Hall's already coming to the bench and he's out of the game. Boy, watch this nice fast break, Jim. Right into your living room. Now stop at the free throw line. There you go. Everybody feels the lane nice. Hold it with that nice spin move underneath the basket for that reverse layup. But this is what you want to do. Feel the lane. Stop that nice little spinner off the backboard. No one does that better with that little spin on the basketball than Holden. Matt Hall is indeed out of the game. Two rebounds, two block shots, no points. But Matt Hall. Let's go to Mark Kruger. All right, Jim. Hey, before the ball game, they had the three-point shooting contest. Top four shooters will compete downstate. Want to give recognition to those four players. Gio Carrillo of Rolling Meadows. A couple guys from St. Viator, Trayvon Calvin, Brady Collis, and also Mario Lomanto from Wheeling will all be competing downstate in the three-point shooting contest, Jim. Thank you, Mark. Kirkpatrick on the foul line. His first miss, he's two out of three. Bennett has beaten Willowbrook 67 to 40. Lake Zurich wins over Barrington 69 to 60. So the winner of this game will play Lake Zurich next Tuesday. And I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. <laughs> Bennett coaches the best in the state of Illinois. Gene Heitkamp, boy. Six point lead for Evanston. Peters puts on a ball fake. He drives, he had a shot block. No, we will get a foul call and Peters will go to the line. Boy, he was wide open for the three, but he decided to go off the dribble drive and attack the basket and he gets fouled. Foul is on Bray Boy. That is his first, but you're sending a 76% free throw shooter to the line. Peters two for two tonight. Boy, perfect. <laughs> what a great form. Makes the free throw, shooting it right at his classmates. Bain goes out. Griffin Ryan comes in. He sure doesn't act like a freshman, does he? <laughs> he really does not. Eight-point lead, 2.35 to go. Stolen away, up the floor, Jaheim Holden will lay it in. In your offense from your defense. Ten-point lead for the Evanston Wildcats. The Evanston students feeling pretty good right now. And there will be a push underneath. And this is going to work against Nutrier, so the ball's right back into the hands of the Wildcats. Yeah, and that's going to be really difficult now. Boy, look at the Wildcats. They do a wonderful job right there. It jumps right into the passing lane, and you just kick it right out. A nice steal there by Jones. You kick it out to hold for the layup. At the line now will be Gibson. He's 0 of 2 from the line. Pretty good time to get your first to one. And it is starting to look a little bit difficult right now for Nutria. Rebound by Silverstein. Griffin Ryan got rid of it. Three-pointer, Samuelson, that one won't go. Silverstein got the rebound. Trying from the other side is Kirkpatrick. He can't hit. Tapped out. Griffin Ryan able to get there. Keeps the possession alive, and it goes in and out of the hands of Matt Samuelson. And we are under two minutes to go with an 11-point lead for the Evanston Wildcats. Well, you know what happened, Jim? Samuelson was trying to pass the ball before he got it. You notice he had his hands really coming forward. He was ready to pass the basketball, but you have to get possession of it before you can pass it. Evanston looking for their 25th win of the year. Show them the ball, drive to the basket. Works every time. Boy, showtime by Jones. Lance Jones with 17. 
And Bame is going to get fouled by Jalen Gibson. Fourth foul for Gibson. Right now it's a 7-1 run for Evanston. And, and again, Evanston doing a great job on the 7-1 run, Jim, on the defensive end, doing a wonderful job. Now watch Jones, he'll show you the basketball, show it to the right, goes to the left for the nice, easy, uncontested layup. This is Bame's first free throw of the night. And when your big guys inside have only taken five free throws on the night, it either means they're not defending them or they're not able to finish. Well, I'm going to say that it's just with the defense Evanston has been playing, they just don't have a matchup, so they're not going hard on the guys in the post. Exactly. And it's working. Bames coming out. The trier is going to need to force some turnovers. They get one there. Conahan able to put it in. Conahan has eight. Scott Fricky calls a timeout. Ten point game, 91 seconds left. Boy, big turnover there by the Wildkids. Wonderful defense by New Trier. They just jumped right in into the passing lane there, Jim, on the out-of-bounds play and gets a nice, easy layup. And now we're only down 10 points with one and a half minutes to go. There's plenty of time. Start with highlights from across the Chicago area, mix in interviews with coaches, players, and fans. And Sports Weekly comes to life. Join Perry Williams every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6.30 here on CN100 for the week's most comprehensive high school sports coverage in Chicagoland. You can also catch Perry in HD on demand under Get Local CN100. X1 users look for Get Local under the Xfinity Services tab. I wonder if Perry's going to have some water polo highlights. They yeah, had a water polo tournament yeah, here Yeah, I saw tonight. that. The outdoor sports don't start until next week, but the uh, water polo, the boys volleyball, look at going pretty quickly here. Well, that was New, that was Nutria's last time out, Jim. Long pass, Ryan Boss makes the catch, gets fouled, they'll go to the line. No question about that foul. And that is foul number 10 on Nutrier. Super bonus time for Evanston. IHSA score zone has Simeon 53, Maris 48 with no time remaining. So just waiting to confirm that that is a final. Well, if no time's remaining, I would assume well, it's a final. Sometimes they get a little overzealous on the old score zone. <laughs> Bozier goes out. Brayboy comes back in. Yeah, that's an offensive move there. Remember, Bame and Brayboy are both back next year. Kirkpatrick knocks one in. Evanston getting the job done from the line tonight. They are 12 out of 17. And then an offensive foul committed by Lance Jones. Wait yes. a minute now, Jones tried to give the ball up. 76 seconds left in a 10 point lead for Evanston. Yeah, he tried to give the ball back up. Here it is again. He'll get the basketball and he'll give it back to him. He tried to give it up. Boy, that's a great call. And that is a great play to take that charge by Griffin Ryan. The Trevians have made three three pointers in the game one by Kirkpatrick and two by Conahan. Conahan is not in the game right now. Sam Silverstein is taking his place in the line. Long three, Kirkpatrick. And then Blake Peters with a rebound. He gets wrapped up, and the ball is going to go right back to Nutrier as it's called a held ball. Yeah, no foul. It's called a held ball. Pretty good play. You don't foul them. You would think you would foul right away just to stop the clock, but they get a tie-up. And that's going to be a foul on Peters, so he commits a foul, stops the clock, and Nutrier is in the super bonus. And Mike Ellis is saying why. <laughs> you don't want to stop the clock and give Nutrier a chance to chip two points off your lead. Ryan is one for four from the foul line. Boy, that one looked awfully good heading up there, didn't it? 
Yeah, it I mean, really we, did. It did everything but fall. We are dead on in line to the opposite free throw, and that thing looked like it was hunt. Well, it went around, just bounced out. Is there a discussion over whether or not they're in the super bonus? Because he was the referee was signaling ten. Scoreboard says ten. I guarantee you, New Trier's book says ten. I don't believe this is a question about the amount of fouls on a player, because, well. Let's see here. If, if they're not, now, I think it is a question about how many shots, because now one of the referees signaled two, two. is in two yeah. shots. Well, Ryan is back on the line. He missed the first one, so it's either a two-shot foul or they are indeed in the double bonus. Either way, Ryan gets one more, and after missing that one, he's had a long time to think about it, which usually is not a good sign. That one looked pretty similar to the yeah. first one, but that one went in. Nine-point lead, 110 to go. Bossed up the floor, three guys chasing him, and he gave the basketball up. Griffin Ryan has it, shovels it over. Three-pointer on the way by Conahan that hit the front of the iron. Up the floor, Jaheim Holden, and he will lay it in. Evanston in good shape now, up by 11, 52 and a half seconds left. Yeah, and Evanston takes a timeout, which is a great timeout by Coach Ellis, but he wants to get his guys Everybody on the same page. Here it is again. Boy, this is a really good look for a three-pointer, but he's going to miss it. And now the Wildcats, they want to run. There's a great break out there by Holden with the nice left hand. Take a timeout to set everybody up. Say, look, here's what we're going to do on defense. Here's what we're going to do on offense the last 53 seconds in this ball game. Belleville West has beaten Moline 67 to 47. And while we have a second, Look around 3A. North Chicago leading DePaul College Prep 52 to 40 in the fourth quarter. Morgan Park 90, Bogan 60, three minutes to go in the fourth. And Marion Catholic leading Kankakee 52 47 with two minutes to go. And some of this giant crowd has decided to try to beat the traffic. And it is going to take a while to get from the parking lot out onto Dempster. Curie leading Whitney Young 31-21 at the half. Winner of that game will play Simeon at Chicago State in our final game of the week of the basketball season. All public league final, super sectional final. Nutrier needs a three and they need it in a hurry. It's not a bad move. They don't get a three pointer that way. But Ryan Boss clock, picks up the, the foul. The clock stops, and that's what the coaches right. don't like. See, I think with an 11-point lead, I, I would give up to three. Big deal. The Kirk, thing is, you don't want that clock to stop. Kirkpatrick is three of four. He made his last free throw. So we get Conahan and Mosier back into the game. Brayboy and, B, and Bame go out. They will be back as soon as Nutria gets off of defense. <laughs> Both free throws by Kirkpatrick are good. Can Nutria get a steal? Middle of the floor, Boss, nice catch. And he lost it for a moment, but it went right to Peters, and he was grabbed by Holden. Yeah, Holden wants to stop the clock. That's what let, he wants to do. Let me check that. I said Holden was Kirkpatrick. I got my ones right. mixed up. Yeah, Kirkpatrick wants to stop the clock. Right. But you put a guy on the line who's four for four tonight.
Now he's he snuck that one in the right side <laughs> of the basket. I'm going to bet that this one goes right down the drain. I tell you what, he's a cool freshman. Yeah, he really is. He is a cool freshman. Well, we talked about the fact that in the last game between these two teams, Blake Peters had an off night. And if he had an on night, it might be the difference in the game. Well, he's got 19 tonight. And it appears it may be the difference. Peters had the rebound taken away by Jalen Gibson. And then a foul by Griffin Ryan. We're down to 28 seconds to go. And it is an 11-point lead for Evanston. And I would say that Lance Jones might be right that it might be time for the students for Evanston to celebrate. Looks like super sectional. Here we come. Now, normally the Evanston student section, when you've seen them this year, they have gone with the retro jersey theme night. They wore all black tonight. A blackout, they told us. And I asked why, and one of the students told me, we think it's going to be a funeral. <laughs> So maybe not the most tactful thing to say, but you love the honesty of kids, don't you? Yes. Three-pointer, that one off the back of the iron and no good. Rebound and a stick back by Silverstein, but we're down to 16 seconds left. Foul in the backcourt by Kirkpatrick. Now there was some controversy late in a game earlier this week on the college level between Colorado and I think it was Arizona. Was it Arizona? Uh, oh, in the handshake line. Right, yes. and they, and you know, yeah. they had called off the dogs. They're going to let the clock run, and then CU dunked the. But no, it wasn't Arizona. It was the game. It was Arizona State. State. Yeah. Colorado dunked it, and then a little fisticuff ensued. And the coach for Colorado, Tad Boyle, was injured, breaking up some scuffles. Now, yeah, I saw that. Now, why is Tad Boyle a big deal? Tad Boyle single-handedly my senior year of high school, kept our high school basketball team from going to state. Yeah, I saw him when he ran off the bench and he pulled a hamstring. We beat Greeley Central the final night of the regular season, but then they got us two weeks later in the conference tournament. We didn't get to go to state. Tad Boyle was the best player in the state of Colorado his senior year at Greeley Central. Five seconds to go. Little runner won't go. And that is going to end it. The Evanston Wildcats for the second year in a row, they are on their way back to the Super Sectionals and they will face Lake Zurich with the opportunity to go to the Final Four in Class 4A. Final score, Evanston 69, New Trier 57. We're back to wrap it up in a moment on the CN100 Game of the Week. You're watching the Comcast Network. CN100, Chicago. The Emmy Award-winning program, Inside Game of the Week, is back with another epic battle on the gridiron. The 8A semifinals featured the defending state champion Maine South Hawks and the top-ranked Lincoln Way East Griffins. With exclusive access and a camera at every angle, watch these perennial powers collide in a whole new perspective with Inside Game of the Week. Check CN100.tv for air times or go anytime to Xfinity On Demand and select Get Local CN100. X1 users, scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. Hi, I'm Cindy Bravos. On this edition of Community Connection, we welcome Sheridan Turner from Cole Children's Museum, highlight art from Carla Bank, and explore the art behind major court cases with courtroom sketch artist Thomas Gianni. We'll take you on location to relax with sound meditation. Plus, we have Alyssa Gambla making one of her favorite desserts. All this and more on Community Connection. See it here first. Watch this episode and other exclusive stories on Comcast On Demand. Fresh off the 2017 Chicago Midwest Emmys, CN100 is proud to announce its win for Inside Game of the Week Thornwood Sectional for Best Sports One Time Special. Go inside the locker rooms and team huddles for an all access experience from the 2017 Thornwood Sectional. Relive this thrilling Emmy winning program with Xfinity On Demand in the Emmy nominations folder by selecting Get Local and choosing CN100. X1 users, go to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. 
Join Backstage Chicago in celebrating Blue Man Group's 20th anniversary in the Windy City with Backstage Blue Man Group. Host Paul Lisnick goes in-depth with the show's stars. We not only unmask the Blue Man Group, but reveal exclusive behind-the-scenes footage to some of the Blue Man secrets. Go to cn100.tv for a list of airtimes or view this program anytime with Xfinity On Demand by selecting Get Local and choosing CN100. X1 users, scroll over to Xfinity Services and select Get Local. The celebration going on here on the floor at Main East as the Evanston Wildkits celebrate their second straight trip to the Super Sectionals. They earned their way there this year by beating Nutrier 69-57 in this sectional championship game. Three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Nutrier was down five and they had the ball. A chance to make it a one possession game, but the Trevians turn it over. The ball heads the other way. And it's just a jailbreak for Evanston. Look at them fill the lanes. They did this all night long. Beautiful pass from Lance, Lance Jones, Jones to Jaheim Holden. And then that put Evanston up by seven. And they legged it out from there. And they end up earning a 12-point victory tonight here in this section championship game. Evanston will next play Lake Zurich. And that game will take place at the Sears Center in Hoffman Estates. That game will come up on Tuesday night. So in the midst of the celebration by the Evanston students <laughs> is our friend Mark Kruger. Mark? All right, Jim, thank you very much. Here with Lance Jones, second year in a row. You win a sectional. How difficult was it to win it this year? Oh, it was very difficult. Knowing that we played our rivalry, New Trier, it's always a good game, but we knew it was going to be difficult from the start. What was the key in the second half when they tried to make a run? They didn't get closer to five. You guys showed a lot of poise in that second half. We just wanted to stay calm. We just wanted to stay calm. We didn't want to let them get a lead because we know they're capable of coming back. Three weeks ago, they came in your place, Beersley Gym, took it to you a little bit. One by 16. How much was that on your mind tonight? It was on our mind a lot. We wanted to get our revenge. You got Lake Zurich now for a super sectional matchup. Do you know much about the Bears? Not much, but we're going to watch the film. You going to get much sleep tonight? I'm going to see. I'm going to try. How about the support from all the student body behind you? A lot of crowd, baby. Jim, back to you. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Everything is good in E-Town tonight. Oh, yes. Quite honestly, the Wildcats have been a very consistent team all year. They are a very balanced team. And one of the ways they get you, Kenny, is they have a lot of different guys who can score. Lance Jones was 17 tonight. Jaheim Holden, he had 16. But... Evanston used the three-point shot to get a lead early, and they made it stand up. Yeah, you see they were 8 out of 10 from the three-point land, where Nutria just 3 out of 17. Evanston without rebounded, 27 to 19. But they still come away with the big win. Look at the turnovers, 20 turnovers for Nutria. That's a lot of turnovers. Here are, team. here are your super sectional matchups. Evanston will play Lake Zurich. The same side of the bracket, Simeon has gotten through. They had a tough fight tonight against Marist. Curie was leading Whitney Young, but the Dolphins get a three-pointer at the buzzer to send the game to overtime, and Whitney Young leading in overtime. Belleville West will play West Aurora. Larkin will play Bennett. What an atmosphere here at Main East this week and the Evanston Wildcats. Well, you know what? They might as well celebrate for a while because when you have 3,000 people in the gym, it's going to take a while for the parking lot to clear out. And we have just learned that Whitney Young has won so our final CN100 game of the week of the year will be a 4A super sectional from Chicago State. Simeon against Whitney Young. Classic matchup. Kenny, they'll yep. go at it one more time. Well, that's the biggest rivalry in the public league. That one always draws a lot of people. So if you're going to be a Chicago State, get there early. So our game tonight brought to you by Xfinity. Get the internet speed and TV channels you want at a price you'll love and find out how to get up to five lines of unlimited nationwide talk and text at no extra cost with Xfinity Mobile. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. So, for my Hall of Fame partners, Mark Kruger and Kenny McReynolds, for our entire CN100 crew, I'm Jim Blaney. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're having a good time down there on the floor, <laughs> and they earned it. Evanston wins it over Nutrier. 
69-57. Thank you for joining us on the CN100 Game of the Week.